Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, um, old grandpa is going to present you some nice bedtime story, which will be very exciting, interesting, and also educational in many ways. Uh, I believe that everybody will find it interesting in their own way. For I expect majority of people who would listen to me and watch this video are going to think, to start thinking, to reflect uh, on what does it all mean. Uh, and but uh, uh, well, probably some some people would even cry or get very emotional. Uh, but uh, I also. I'm pretty sure that there will be a number of people who would uh, just laugh all all the time. Why? I guess because they always do when they are listening to something. And uh, I actually can also understand it because it was already scientifically proved that uh, uh, laugh is uh, having a very good impact on your health. So understandably when you're uh, listening to something you cannot catch uh, well it, instead of just losing time in Wayne losing one hour watching this video then at least you can um, well you can use it uh, improving your health so I think everyone will st will find uh, something uh, well for themselves here so let us start let us start once upon a time I can even tell exactly the uh, the precise date, I believe it was, uh, let's check, uh, 1st of June, kids day, 1st of June 2024, um, Danny Resch, we all know of course uh, him, he came to a tournament in Norway, uh, Stavanger, and uh, just uh, after, uh, upon the arrival, I mean he recorded this uh, short video on the statistics about the upcoming match of him against Anish Giri. I, it was a, a bullet match, uh, well, I, I don't even know what was, uh, how did it finish, but anyways, let's listen to this. Information and, in regards to the probability that you would score 72 out of 74 against me in this upcoming bullet match. Go ahead and tell, tell them what you did. So, uh, I, I think we, you know, upon your question on Twitter, I, I think you've, you've seen this. So, you, using Chesscom uh, bullet, uh, you know, ratings, your probability of scoring is exactly 72 over 74 games. It's about 26%. 26%. better odds than I give you. <laughs> but but, uh, but yeah, go ahead. But of course, you know, this, this doesn't take into account the probability of scoring 72.5 and 73. Or, or tilt. It doesn't take in. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, as you put it, it doesn't take into account tilt probabilities. So, for example, if you get an early draw, you know, or of early win, that might yeah change things. So, but, it, but he also said if it was out of seventy-five or even seventy-six, just a few more games, your odds might even be fifty percent. So he's not giving me very good odds. No. Yeah. No. Exactly. I think no. yes. So this, 70... is, this is now going to be an uncomfortable car ride <laughs> as, as we head over to Nor Norway Chess round five. Yes. So, anything else you want to say to it? And, and so on. So, uh, that was uh, the video which I uh, somehow managed to watch very uh, well uh, straight away. And uh, I, I suppose, I don't know, this gentleman is he one of those mathematicians from Chesscom or maybe independent one? This I don't know. Maybe he is a person. Who is uh, who? Whom Chesscom was referring referring to as a top ten university mathematician? I, I this I don't know. It has to. Be, Danny should uh, answer this question. We have millions of dollars invested into software algorithms that look at these reports. We have st deep statistics. We know how likely it is that a that a player of a certain rating can achieve a certain level of play. But somehow it uh, immediately like. Well, uh, seemed very dubious to me this cal this calculation because again, if it's about exactly 72 out of 74, 26 percent is far too high. I mean, even intuitively. I mean, not well. Uh, okay, I'm not a special. I'm not a mathematician, but uh, I already get, especially last year, I, I got a bit into this matter, and it, it felt quite dubious to me. And the whole story actually started from this point. I guess Danny. Uh, well, um, I was quite unhappy that he recorded this uh, video, 
uh, because it uh, I, I just published very quickly I published a post uh, uh, that it seems to be uh, yeah wait if the expected score is 72 out of 74 how it could be 26 percent probability could someone explain this and so on uh, I mean uh, yeah I mean 72 plus is, is kind of another story well and then it's a it's a Twitter you can see the all those uh, conversations I'm going to show you the open source and you can see all of them so and then some people Anish uh, answered uh, Danny Resch and then fortunately some mathematicians started to to get into the discussion and that was the beginning of the story of the whole story I'm going to tell you very interesting story uh, so the, then there is a person you probably already know him I, I, I was talking about him in my previous uh, uh, tweets in my previous videos uh, Mike Kagansky Kagansky Mike uh, it's yeah this is him I don't know I, I don't know him personally I don't know where is he from probably Ukraine maybe he in the US I don't know he doesn't he's know what he's talking about Kiev football club so probably he's Ukrainian but he's definitely already noticed long ago that he definitely understands this um, the subject mathematics and uh, and he is a uh, big chess fan seemingly he plays himself and uh, he is doing a lot of statistics uh, on title Tuesday on other things. So he very quickly he came up with his calculations. Uh, so finally his um, his answer was that uh, okay anything above seventy one point five so means seventy two or more. It was like around sixty seven percent probability and uh, exactly seventy two as not 26 but actually 16.7 percent uh yeah by the way the final uh, conclusion of the other people who also uh, entered the conversation as you will see later uh they had uh, exactly the same uh, finally uh, calculation so around 70 percent so actually yeah it just shows I mean, I'm sorry, of course, everybody can make mistakes, but uh, yeah, 26%, even me, I mean, just even without calculation, I even wrote there that, uh, well, I, I didn't have time to contact my mathematicians yet, I will do later, but it's clearly wrong. I mean, it cannot be correct. So it was, well, a little, there was a little mistake, like 10% only mistake of probability. Uh, so and then fortunately then we started to discuss actually it's an extremely interesting discussion I was really enjoying it because here of course finally we were talking to real mathematicians not to fake ones who were pretending to be but a real one and then of course I was more asking questions giving some hypothesis but basically listening to them and uh, actually it was very meaningful even Anish he entered and he also thanked everyone after that he said it was extremely interesting for him so that is something I really enjoy talking to professionals who understand the issue. Uh, so you can, by the way, follow this uh, whole uh, conversation. It was very long then some other people were entering. So let's go then uh, to, yeah, first of all about Mike Kagansky. I would really recommend you. He is doing very many, a lot of very interesting statistics like, uh, I mean, small things here, as I mentioned already, let's say, there is another another two I will show you for instance very interesting what he is doing is this is uh, titled Tuesdays and uh, you can find on his um, uh, Twitter here yeah uh, so one of this is very interesting so he is doing a lot of statistics on titled Tuesdays on quality of play performances etc and uh, this is a table he did for uh, cross table for uh, for like last half, January, February, March, April was included. Then I think he stopped at least for the moment. It was really time consuming as he explained in his uh, X. So that is what means zero, one, two. I think as far as I remember, you can, you can check it there. He explains very uh, accurately. So as far as I remember, uh, two was, well, there are two parameters. One, uh, how um, uh, how many times during one title Tuesday you are having let's say less than 10 seconds on the clock so so one if you have one it means that you never had in none of the 11 games as far as I understand you didn't have a less than 11 uh, less than 10 seconds on the clock so uh, well you always had time reserve you played quick 
And another one, another is, um, I think it's uh, games where you will never uh, worse than one than minus 1.5. So you will never totally lost, especially for even my, minus 1.5, as you understand for Blitz, it's, uh, it's still a fightable situation. And, and if you had both, then you have two. Zero means you had at least one situation each of those two. And one means that you had one, one correct, one, I mean, uh, one you manage, one not. So two, uh, he called it full control. So you are in full control on the situation, more or less, in every game. And then he was given this, uh, how many, or practically all major players, how, how many times they had this full control. And you see that, uh, let's say, Nakamura Carlson, well, you see, not too often. But there are some people who have full control very, very often. Anyways, you can check it, just, I give you an example, yeah, just example that he's actually doing very interesting work, uh, or let's say another, another thing, so here he gives, then we come to Hikaru Nakamura, uh, I will give a teaser that uh, in the second half we will examine very, very accurately, mathematically, scientifically his performances, but uh, for the moment the story should develop, you know, uh, the tension will grow and grow, so that's how it should be normally. <clears throat> so then we were discussing this, finally getting, well, somehow to a consensus that actually it all uh, is not serious mathematics, what, what Danny and uh, this gentleman were trying to tell in this short video. And uh, uh, then there is this person, uh, Maurits van der Meer, he, he got in, Actually, he's a mathematician, he's a real mathematician, and in fact, it's seemingly very, very serious quality. One, I mean, very serious education, big chess fan as well, as I, as I understand, Bayesian statistics, uh, father of two, likes basketball chess, quite good chess player also, I'm, I mean, almost professional level. As I understand, I never checked, but I'm more interested in him as a mathematician. Frankly, I, I even blocked him at some point because, uh, well, he was just one of those many, many people who pretended that they have PhD, whatever. And yeah, it's my fault. There are so many that, you know, writing complete nonsense that I was just blocking. And at some point I also blocked him when I realized that he is actually a real one, one of, uh, you know, my very, very few who writes who is a real one. Of course, I unblock him. And then and uh, yeah, so after that, actually, what I, I at the end of this conversation about uh, Anish Giri Danny Range match, uh, I I asked by the way, you know, and and there was also quite a few other mathematicians, uh, or people who are very qualified, like this gentleman. I don't know him also personally, not at all. He seems to be American. He is a specialist in AI, machine learning, and uh, definitely I check his account very 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 high professional person. Uh, definitely, if you are a specialist in AI machine learning, you have to be a very high level of mathematics as well. So he also, he liked chess also. It was a very fruitful discussion, very interesting, because there are so many details actually there that we'll come to uh, a little bit later. And at the end of the conversation, then I asked, okay, maybe then uh, if you if you're so good, you are really clearly professional mathematicians. So maybe you can just, and you are just amateurs, you like chess, and maybe you, are, you can try to calculate the probabilities of uh, uh, performances of Hikaru. Free stuff, free stuff, free stuff! Nice. Uh, which I'm trying to, uh, you know, trying to publish, trying to get chess con to answer, they don't answer. Uh, well, if you, uh, you cannot really consider an answer uh, not only possible, but in fact likely, okay. <laughs> so, so and this gentleman, Ma Maurits van der Meer, he, he told, okay, I'm a bit busy now, but I will, once I have time, I will try to, to do this. And uh, at some point, uh, he finally published. Uh, so I really would uh, recommend you to, to read all this. It's a very interesting, if you enjoy mathematics, if you like mathematics, if you, if you like to understand how it works, probability, statistics. And those are real professionals, not all these uh, Hikaru fans who pretend to have PhD. Uh, and you can uh, go through all this. So what finally the gentleman he presented, I will write it. I will read it for you. A while ago, I got into a discussion with none other than Vladimir Kramnik about statistics of strictness for certain top chess players. 
It took me a while, but I finally found the time to run some analysis. Warning, long thread below. Yeah, that is of course uh, 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 quite a uh, dramatic warning because for me, uh, I, I'm uh, longer it is, better it is because it's a professional token, but I guess it's uh, not very usual nowadays um, point of view. But let's, let's try, okay, if you are interested to read it all, uh, of course, I would highly recommend it, but I will just go to the main point. So, um, Maurice uh, uh, says, okay, he is, uh, he thanks people who help him. And then he, he presents his research, his research. Um, yes. He also tells by the way that, well, at the end of the research, the streak happened in reality out of the players that I examined, many showed evidence of some streaks that are unlikely in my model. Actually, not many, I would say less than half definitely so i would contest this uh, i believe this is not evidence of cheating but simply a shortcoming of my model well uh, it can be also other uh, some uh, it can be exactly uh, the opposite and actually i i think i wrote him that uh, maybe it's not only yeah maybe it's it's actually your model is correct because it's uh, it's not only you who came to very similar conclusions Kramnik uh, clearly which, has which lost his mind. It's possible, but I don't know. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, so he's explaining now what is what what did he do here? I downloaded the three plus zero three without increment games from sixteen top players and Danny Resch. Well, he's even more important than top players over the last half year, starting starting December first, two thousand twenty three. Uh, yeah, now I see uh, already this um, uh, a lot of people starting to write the comment. Now this is sherry picking. This is sherry picking. Uh, well, of course, uh, all games played. Yeah, from December 2003, exactly as I did uh, also, and looked at the number of streaks they obtained. For this, I have defined three types of streaks. Why I am reading this to you, patience a little bit. I will show you then all the numbers uh, just after. But first you need to understand the method and it's completely logical method. Yeah, I mean, I was doing my team, I would say, was doing something very, very similar and got to very similar conclusions. And we, I have no idea. I never met this person, never even spoke really about all this with him. So it's completely independent mathematician who, and not the only one who got to the same conclusions. Actually, Mike Kagansky also got to very similar conclusions. And there is another person also got to the same conclusion. Also, I mean, this uh, Jepalit, as I understand, he, his conclusions were very similar, even more, even straighter, I would say. So, uh, okay, this is not a joke and uh, I'm, I'm not a crazy, paranoid, salty grandpa. I mean, it is true. And I, I told you from the beginning, it is true. And uh, it's very interesting for me what Hikaru and his um, sect will uh, will mm, tell now. Uh, or Chesscom, how will they react? Of course, they will not react again, but this is serious, yeah, my friends. This is not a joke. I think he's just full of shit. Statistics are odd. Hikaru is odd. So, uh, yes, so he is saying that downloaded this. There are three types of streaks. A win streak is a sequence of games that are all wins. An unbeaten streak is a sequence of games without losses. Uh, a Kramnik streak is a sequence of games. I mean, unbeaten streak, so you, you play as many games, draw, win or, or draw, before you lose the first one. Yeah, And then how long is this streak? Uh, a, a Kramnik streak, he called it Kramnik streak because I, I, I was cal calculating also in this way. So I, I, I would call it overperformance streak. So is a sequence of games with an at most one draw and all other games are wins. Why? Because, well, you know, you can have, as I many times already mentioned in my previous uh, videos, that you can have, let's say, 10 wins, lost and another 10 wins, or you can have, um, you know, somewhere, uh, let's say, 10 wins, loss, five wins, loss and another wins, few wins, or you can have like nine wins, draw and another nine wins. Of course, uh, the second variation is better, but uh, you know, it's it's uh, the streak is is winning streak is shorter. So it's not really about winning streaks. Yeah, it's more about overperformance streaks. So you can allow one draw in between, but if you win, 
before that and after that a lot of games it's it's actually can be yeah also a, a sign of a huge huge overperformance. I'm explaining it to you here in detail and he called it Kramnik streak. Okay, so a sequence of games with at most one draw, no more than one draw and all other games are wins. Then, please note that there is a hierarchy. Every win streak is also a Kramnik streak. Yeah, that's for sure. Every Kramnik streak is also an unbeaten streak. I'm, I'm sorry if it's getting too complicated. That is less uh, interesting. I mean, that doesn't really affect the numbers. Uh, so, in my analysis, I computed the number of streaks of lengths 10 and 25 and the lengths of the longest streak. Okay, uh, then he said, then, uh, then Maurice explains the methods. So, for the games played, I use a modified version of the ELO formula to compute win draw loss probabilities based on the rating difference. I must say here, of course, there are different uh, possibilities here. I was doing also in a different way, taking feeder rating, trying to use Glico system, uh, which is much more complicated because there is no clear indication uh, what are the uh, probabilities of each result in Glico system. You have to really calculate it out on your own. But uh, in any case, I mean, the results are not too different, not a very big difference uh, most of the time. Uh, so the expected score based on this win draw loss odds equals and uh, equals the expected score of the regular ELO formula. Okay. Um, then using this then uh, using these probabilities, I run uh, one thousand simulations. That is sorry to um, yeah um, to mention very important that nowadays it's becoming a major actually major way of research is um, yeah it's uh, Monte Carlo uh, simulation. So you are just simulating it uh, and uh, you know in nowadays uh, development uh, it's already given a very very accurate results. Uh, so, uh, using these probabilities, I run 1000 simulations on the entire history of games of each of the players. So, for example, for a player who played 1500 games in the last half year, I run 1000 times 1500 games. Well, anyways, you can be, you can trust this is, uh, I mean, this guy, sorry, <laughs> knows what he's talking about. Yeah. He doesn't know what he's uh, talking about. He's, he's making actually, stuff it's up. Speciality, um, even not only mathematics, but exactly probabilities and so on, as I understand. Then I continue this trick. So he's explaining uh, this. Yeah, that is imp quite important to understand. Also, we had a, a long, long discussion about it later, if you read this thread. Uh, an important assumption I made is that is the uh, independent and identically distributed assumption or IID. This means that we simulate each game's result based on only the probabilities computed from the rating difference and we assume that the games are mutually independent. Um, now let me show you the output of my analysis. So for each player I report the number of games played an average rating difference between this player and their opponents. I will show you. Um, yeah, so here is, uh, uh, yeah, he gives many, many different players uh, the results. I, I prepared for you because there are many numbers which are, well, maybe more uh, very interesting for, for professional mathematicians like uh, median and uh, like mean and so on. So, uh, but I, I just present to you the most important numbers. So for general public, yes, to understand. Uh, here, yeah, let's come back to this IID. That's actually, that is one of the points why I, I don't want to publish all researches of my team. And, and uh, this team is also very qualified because the different assumptions, scenarios as as uh, you can see, you can say also the different scenarios. So you need to get to a certain consensus of how exactly you do it. So you can do it, first of all, with different distribution. It can be, you know, the different uh, distributions and that changes quite a lot. The, the uh, I mean, can change, can potentially change uh, the final result. There are also, yeah, different assumptions like IID uh, that games are independent or that they are dependent. The point is that I think in our case in chess, well, they are independent unless 
there is a certain influence on the independence of each game mathematically proven. Yeah, there is tilt, it's not mathematically proven, and also you don't for, uh, we should not forget that uh, yeah, it's becoming more difficult to play after four losses in a row, but also you get much more relaxed after four wins in a row, so you are not so concentrated anymore. Nobody had, I mean, if there is a way to calculate it, um, at least nobody have done it yet. There is no, no uh, proof that this concept has a serious con uh, influence on the final performance, especially in a long amount of games. And uh, we, well, since it's a completely mathematical structure, I mean, uh, the research, so we cannot just take uh, intuitive ideas. Okay, this guy, he is playing tired to, more often than other guy. Well, to start with all this, including your psychological stability and so on, it should normally already be included in the rating. So, and, and so on and so on. But as, even, if, even if some not, it has to be proven mathematically, statistically, that this is a re it has a real effect. Then you can include into research. As, as, as for now, well, we know that the game of chess the whole rating system is based on the uh, criteria that each game is, is an individual uh, result. Yeah, has an individual result and then you play another game. So the whole system, competitive system, rating system is based on this assumption. So I don't see any reason to uh, not to take this assumption. That's very logical, um, especially when we take ratings, performances. If somebody, yeah. So, so we were discussing a lot if, if this can, in any case, I believe it cannot really give a huge influence on the percentage of probability. But, uh, well, if somebody wants to contest it, he has to come up with a very, very strong mathematical uh, formulas and explanations that this really has effect and a significant effect. I'm sure it's not, but please, if you think it is, um, try to prove it somehow. If not, then we, ha we can only work uh, the way, well, the way it's done here. So now uh, I want to present you the final outcome. I just took some players, not all, because it's, again, if you want, you can go through uh, all, all the players, all the numbers and so on. I just uh, took a few. Most, uh, most of, of, of those who, uh, who played quite a number of games, so the, the statistical, because, okay, he also checked some players who played only 40 games. I believe, yeah, 40 is definitely not... Not big enough number, but okay, uh, Ma Mauritz was doing it in a very scientific, accurate uh, fashion. And uh, yes, so I'm going to present it to you right now. Uh, well, what I want to say that uh, uh, I would just like to warn uh, over emotional people maybe to switch off the video now to avoid some uh, some uh, strong emotions, tears, etc. Uh, maybe I would also uh, advise the same for Hikaru fans uh, because what they will see can really shock them and uh, uh, probably well will be difficult to swallow. So <laughs> that's why uh, I I am sure I give you a second for all those groups to to leave the video if they want. Uh, I don't want to damage anyone. And now, with all people left, let's uh, let us proceed. And I, I'm presenting you the results of this research. Yeah, ju just to shut that asshole up, because uh, I'm going to say it once and for all. So here it is. Um, I I've chosen a few players, of course, Magnus Carlsen uh, as well. Um, and uh, well, uh, got here uh, the most important number, so to say. Of course, if you wish to study it in full, you can always uh, check uh, this gentleman's uh, tweet uh, and uh, check it all. But actually, many numbers there are really for professionals. Uh, but for general public, I would say those are the most important numbers. Um, so, uh, name, first name, uh, Magnus Carlsen. Let's start with Magnus. Because he, I, I, I've chosen a few players who actually played many games during this period. Uh, because uh, also, Maurits, he 
uh, added some players who played 40, 60 games. It's not, of course, yeah, as you understand, it's not that telling, especially when it's about 25 win streak. Okay, it's quite difficult to perform many if you played 40 games. So uh, that's why I took a minimum, I think, 400 games and more. Uh, well, 400 games is already quite a number and uh, the, well, prominent uh, high rated players on chess.com. So Magnus Carlsen, games played uh, due, within the same period of time, 427 games, so well, quite considerable amount. Uh, rating difference, so it is a chess.com rating uh, difference. Why chess.com? Because, well, I mean, uh, to me it, it seems to be very logical. Uh, just uh, look, okay, chess.com is using Glico system, which is mathematically totally correct, it's approved, so it works. As, as ELO system as well, uh, of course it's mathematically correct, they're just a bit different systems. Um, that's why the numbers, the ratings are different on uh, according to Glico and uh, uh, in ELO system. But they are different, but they are coherent, they, at least they should be because it's mathematics. Um, so if there is a huge disbalance in ratings in general, it it can only mean, I'm sorry, that there is a massive cheating, because if not, then there shouldn't be uh, at a general, uh, you know, huge disbalance. That's logical, because both systems are mathematically proved. Uh, so, okay, the, uh, taking a FIDE, FIDE Blitz rating, it has also a lot of minuses in, in a particular case. Maybe on a very big database it, it can make sense, but here, well, we actually don't know, maybe... Uh, one of the players or more uh, played many games with somebody who basically has a wrong FIDE Blitz rating. I mean that he is not, he didn't play for two years already uh, there. And um, therefore, uh, well, I mean, the, this Chesscom rating is pretty actual because people play a lot, especially 3-0, three, three, three without increment. Therefore, this rating is much more, I would say, trustable in uh, in such a research. Anyways, it's also possible to make it uh, to make all this research with uh, using FIDE Blitz rating. Of course, not classical as uh, Hikaru was trying to uh, to do. Uh, well, trying to explain his streak. In fact, there were many streaks. A classical just doesn't make any sense. But FIDE Blitz rating maybe. Uh, Okay, any, everyone who wants, he can make uh, this uh, also using FIDE Blitz ratings. Uh, it's very time consuming, but still. Uh, anyways, I've checked some, some streaks of Hikaru, for example, uh, using FIDE ratings, and it still was like extremely low probability. So it will not change that much, because uh, maybe some opponents, they have a, a much higher chess.com rating by number. Uh, than FIDE rating, but uh, the same time all players like Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru himself, they also have a much, much higher uh, rating uh, on the platform than in, uh, uh, in, on FIDE. Uh, so actually the difference wouldn't be that big anyway. So it, I, I'm pretty sure it will not change dramatically the, um, the whole picture. But anyways, I think it makes actually a lot of sense to use uh, Chesscom rating because it's actual, yeah. And anyway, all kind of uh, your problems like uh, psychologically unstable playing late at night when you are tired, if you have such habits, yeah, it, it, it is, that is very important to understand, it's already implemented in your rating normally. Because if you play a lot of game and most of players, if not all, I, I, I saw, I mean, uh, who, who are playing that they play a lot and constantly so if you always play and you you like you lose two games and then you start to lose some more games uh, in a row then then it, it's implemented in your rating therefore your rating is lower than your real strength let's say in normal circumstances and then so the probability of winning is higher for your for the opponent so it's all included uh, so, okay, anyway, rating difference is 257 points be between Magnus uh, and his opponents uh, in average. Uh, so quite considerable, actually not that much, uh, you know, uh, more than Hikaru himself, for example. Yeah, Hikaru has, I believe, 360 or something. So well, it's comparable to Hikaru. 
so now let's go. Let's see the parameter. 10 wins uh, in a row streaks. Uh, of course, you can make 15, 30. Yeah, I mean, it will not change much because, uh, uh, well, it's just some number. Yeah, so let's say we take these parameters. Yeah, which is logical 10, 25. Why not after all? Because you need to take some parameters, but the parameters must be uh, coherent and logical. It makes a lot of sense. So let's say 10 wins. Uh, 10 win streaks. Magnus has 8 of such streaks. Uh, seems a lot, but actually, I mean, since he is much stronger than his opponents, well, uh, the probability of this to happen is 51%. I would like to know that I converted uh, here for the comfort of public uh, those numbers of probabilities, the original numbers, into percentage. That is well, who knows mathematics, it's very simple to do. You just multiply 200, that number which is in the original post, uh, and that uh, becomes a percentage. So for me, I mean, I know that uh, I can, I can uh, see that the mathematician, the professional mathematician, they prefer to, um, well, to read it, so to say, in, uh, in, in this number like uh, 0, uh, 051, yeah? Uh, 0.51 but uh, okay it's exactly the same but for me also as not a professional he doesn't know I'm what sure he's talking about majority vast majority of, of of you who are watching this video it's kind of easier to to understand in in percentage so that means 0 0.51 means 51 percent uh, which basically means it's more likely than unlikely so it is very likely no problem and but in fact it is the lowest uh, i think the lowest percentage so uh, uh, the rest is like not only um, uh, i mean unlikely but in fact it's like he all his performances are perfectly according to the it should be like this according to his rating rating of his opponents and so on the, everything is very logical uh, yeah, another very important point that uh, just to stop all this, uh, well, very amateurish comments that, okay, but this is Magnus or this is Hikaru, so they are so good that they, they can manage it. I'm sorry, all those percentages, I mean, uh, all those numbers are already including, uh, that is very important to understand for all of you, including the, the person, I mean, the strengths of a person. So it's for Magnus, it is 51% because it's Magnus, because of his strengths, his rating and so on. If it was somebody else, it would drop, in, let's say me, eight, eight streaks like this, the, the probability would be like 1%. So you understand, yeah, it's uh, in these numbers, everything is included. So please don't uh, try to explain uh, me that, uh, okay, but this is Magnus, so maybe for others it's 51% or 2%, but for Magnus it's, it's uh, 90%. No, it is 51% for Magnus Carlson. So, then 25 win streaks, he doesn't have any. Absolutely so ridiculous. I mean, the idea is that, of course, 100% in the sense that, well, I mean, uh, of, let's say, let's put it this way, of fair play. Yeah. So, of course, if you didn't well, have any probability of it is is that you are yeah there is no no reason to suspect anything so it's hundred uh, percent longest wins streak so how many games in a row he won I mean the longest one is fifteen actually not that much uh, and uh, the probability of it is ninety three percent so it must be like this let's put it let's say uh, so then another parameter 10 games in a row unbeaten yeah 12 12 streaks like this seems to be a lot but because it's again because of those parameters uh, it is actually very likely 66 percent so more chance that it will happen than not 25 uh, games unbeaten streak uh, he has only one, also 78%. So it must happen, yes, yeah, so, and it happened. And then another parameter, 10 games overperform streak. So overperform uh, uh, is, yeah, losing only half point. So ten and half out, uh, nine and a half out of 10. It means how many times he made nine and a half out of 10? 11 times. Seems to be quite a lot, but actually, again, it's the probability is 70%. So again, very likely this for this to happen 
Then 25 games uh, over perform streak, so 24 and half 20 of, out of 25, how many times did he manage it? Zero, never managed uh, within <laughs> these games, you know, within this period, so 100%. Uh, and another two parameters, the longest over perform streak, so losing half a point, yeah, only. So 20, in fact, he never made, uh, let's say, 20 and half out of 21. I mean, it was uh, maximum 20 out of 21, yeah? Uh, so that is uh, the longest streak, is only 20, 78% probability. And again, longest unbeaten streak now, uh, 32 games. That is actually quite a lot. And in fact, uh, yeah, in fact, that is his lowest probability uh, to, that it to happen, what he managed, because those are the numbers, as you understand, which happened. Yeah, this is what he performed. So, but still it's 38%, which is a very high chance. I mean, uh, it's uh, more than one out of three. So then it doesn't, there are no questions here. I mean, this can happen definitely. So all in all, his statistics is totally coherent. I mean, there is no question you can ask really. I mean, nothing to, nothing to reproach. Then let's go. Uh, Aliriza Firuja, 419 games, very similar amount, yeah, also quite a lot. Uh, his rating difference uh, in this, these are only 3-0 games, so no title Tuesday, only one time control. It's very important not to mix time control, yeah? Time controls when you are making a serious uh, research. Uh, so 72 only the rating difference. So it means uh, Alirza, when he's playing just, uh, you know, he wants just to play friendly games, he prefers to play very strong players. Who well, you also, think you are? Uh, partly because Magnus is higher rated, so for him it's more difficult to get players of similar rating. So, but in any case, 72 points rating difference for Aliza. And then let's see the probabilities. Again, uh, 10 wins streak only two. I mean, only or two. I mean, it's not so, so little when you are playing very strong opposition. The prob this is, I think, his lowest probability, 36%. Still, like here, 38%. So here, 36%. It is, uh, well, it is perfectly normal. Then uh, 0, 25 wins in a row. Uh, then uh, longest win streak, 12. Not so huge, even though, of course, again, considering those uh, uh, numbers that he has stronger position, actually, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, it's only 50% probability, I mean, not like 93 like here in Magnus, but still it's a lot, 50 is like no questions. 10 unbeaten, uh, 10 games unbeaten streak without losses, he has 3, 60%, so very likely. Here again, he doesn't have 25 games without losing one, 100% probability. Uh, then over performance streak, so losing half point, in 10 games, 9.5 out of 10, he has 3 times, 40% probability, actually a bit, I mean, lower than 50, but again, I, I, I mean, to my understanding, anything which is above 20%, like 1 out of 5, or let's say 25%, 1 out of 4, I mean, that is just, uh, I mean, completely normal, yeah? Then again, no 25 uh, games overperform streaks, 100%, longest uh, streak like this, losing half a point, actually, strangely enough, is only 12 games. I mean, not too much, uh, so 73% probability. And unbeaten, longest unbeaten streak, also not, not huge, 12. 88% probability. So again, I mean, like, perfectly fine. There is just nothing you can find, nothing you can say. I mean, those two players, at least according to, to uh, this para those parameters, this research, you just forget, I mean, Everything fine. Then let's go, uh, who else did I take? I took uh, Hans Niemann. That's awesome. Nothing better than that. Why not? First of all, he played a lot of games. Secondly, he is also, I mean, he has, he's very high, high rated. And uh, also it just uh, for Hikaru and his fans, because, okay, Hikaru is, uh, was telling lots of um, interesting things about uh, Hans. Uh, publicly, so let's check, let's check him, yeah, it's very interesting, I guess, for everyone, and uh, here, uh, 890 games, so a lot, I also, Hans prefers, as you can see, to play with strong opponents, so it's only plus 72 rating difference with, with the, in average, with his opponents, 
10 uh, win streaks, uh, so 10 wins in a row, has one only. Uh, and this is probability is 80%, so very likely. Here, zero, so 100%. Longest win streak, 10. Uh, 10 wins in a row, so 80% probability, according to his rating and his opposition. Then, then here, that is the only number where he has pretty low, but still, I mean, within, a, let's say, a deviation, uh, to my understanding, it's kind of, there is a standard, and there is, I would say, standard, of course, is 50%, yeah? But then there are deviations, 9%, especially if it's only one number. I mean, if you have everywhere 9, 7%, okay, that starts to become suspicious. But here it's just one number, and so even though 9% is not too small. So let's say it's approximately, I would say, one chance out of 10. I mean, it can happen, definitely. Uh, so uh, 10 uh, games unbeaten, so without losses, he has 8 streaks like this in uh, almost 900 games. And the probability here is 9%. Seems to be low, but uh, you will see that it's extremely high for some other players. So, okay, this only is a number which you can kind of pay attention. I mean, if you are uh, working in anti-cheating, but it doesn't really, since all other numbers are perfectly, uh, you know, perfectly fine, I, I don't think here there is much to see, uh, much to check. So 9% is not little. So, uh, yeah, then 25, he doesn't have any 25 games without losses in a row, 100%. Um, 10 games, 9.5 out of 10, he has 3 streaks like this, 66% probability. Again, 100% probability, no 25 games uh, with 24 and half. Longest uh, streak, losing only half point is 12, also not, not that much, so 70% probability. Again, very likely. And the longest unbeaten streak, 13. So quite similar to Firuja. And 80% probability also. So everything is completely in accordance with uh, kind of how it should be. Only this number yeah, is a little low. Okay, that's kind of... Um, yeah. I, I also I don't see here anything to, to reproach, so to say. Um, especially considering, well, there is quite a number of games. Yeah? Absolutely ridiculous. So then, uh, then we are then we go to just spam. Sorry, I I called I call I write here just spam because uh, it's uh, Jose Martinez Alcantara, but because most of people know him as just spam, so it's easier for them to uh, I mean to understand whom I, am I talking about. So Jose, the, I uh, I also added him here because. Uh, uh, he has a lot of games that is quite interesting to check uh, almost one and a half thousand games during this period so yeah he is playing more opponents who are pretty much weaker so that's why also it's interesting to check compare with uh, for example hikaru and magnus because his opponents are 211 uh, chesscom uh, system uh, rating points lower than him in average therefore of course logically he must have, uh, of course, his streaks should be longer. It's normal, yeah, because he had, first of all, more games. So he has more chances to perform the streaks, obviously, much more like you see, uh, four times more yeah, than Magnus or even more. And uh, also his opposition is weaker. So, okay, that's why it's logical that his streaks are longer uh, mathematically. So let's see, 10 win streaks, so 10 wins in a row, he managed 7 streaks like that, actually 100% probability. So in fact, he uh, could have or should have, uh, I mean, normally uh, manage even more than 7. So actually it is quite low number, that's why probability is so high, it's like this here, for sure, it doesn't raise a single question, yeah, so uh, about unfair play, so 7 is not much for him, considering these two numbers. 100%, then no 25 wins in a row, of course 100% also. Longest wins streak, 18. Seems to be a lot, but again, because he played much more games, then it actually still makes 76% probability, so it's very likely to happen. Much more likely uh, to happen than not. Then the only little lower number, but again, completely within the logical deviation of a standard is... Uh, uh, how many 10 games unbeaten streaks uh, did he perform? 
29. It's a lot, but still it makes it like 24%. So like chance one out of four, that is, uh, yeah, that is perfectly normal. Uh, at least if it's only one number like this, no questions at all. Uh, 25 games unbeaten streaks. He had one, one, uh, and this is 70% probability. And then you see again, 94% probability, no 25 overperform, 100%. Longest of a performance streak, losing half point, he has 18 uh, like that. Ah, he has 18 games, so his maximum was 17 and a half out of 18. Uh, so he never had 18 and a half out of 19. And this is 96% probability that this should have happened, and it, it happened. And okay, here also the number is a little lower, but okay, it's practically like one chance out of two, so completely normal. Longest unbeaten streak, he has 29 games in a row without losing, which is the probability is 42%, so almost like one chance out of two. So again, here, absolutely no questions. Another story uh, that um, uh, Jose, okay, his statistics in title Tuesdays, I, I was checking it, it's very different. Yeah, so that's why uh, there the probability start to become much lower. But okay, that's another research. Uh, well, if somebody is interested, uh, using the same formula can, can research uh, uh, there. But for now, we are checking uh, because when you are making some study, you have to get to, to have exactly the same period of time. Everything should be the same, the same time control. So we are checking December to uh, June 3 0 games. So here, no issues at all. Uh, and now, now uh, the most interesting part is coming. Now, uh, Hikaru was complaining that I uh, have pseudo mathematicians, as he was saying, and also that I don't give any any real statistics, which is of course ridiculous. Simply, but uh, if if he thinks I, I never gave it, I gave a lot. But now, especially for Hikaru, his statistics. Opa, let's go. It's quite, uh, quite uh, different. So it says literally games nothing here during this period. Two thousand one hundred seventy-four. So a lot of games. What does it mean? Actually, more games, less room for anomalies is there. So of course, more you play, more it has to get to an, to the norm. Yeah. Uh, let's say if we consider norm 50%, let's say, yeah, then it should get closer and closer, more games you played. So that's why normally his statistics must be, you know, much more, you know, like there the must be much less deviation because of the amount of games. Um, then uh, his difference uh, with the opponents, yeah, so he has uh, the highest 369 in average uh, points, uh, rating points difference. Again, it's uh, considerable, it's a lot, but still, if you consider, let's say, Magnus Carlsen, who is, well, arguably, in my understanding, not even arguably, is not weaker than, than, than Hikaru, yeah, uh, so... Um, uh, well, you can compare this difference. I mean, it's not like day and night, 257 uh, difference and 369. So logically, the probability, the performances must be, uh, well, I mean, not must not differ comp too much. Yeah? Even though, of course, when it's a different amount of games, but let's say it's all since in probabilities, all this, as I mentioned, already calculated. So the probabilities should be, well, more or less similar and yeah? not too big difference, which is uh, obviously not the case here. So, by the way, I can also uh, mention that actually it's a very favorable period for Hikaru in sense of probabilities because... Uh, this gentleman who was doing it, the mathematician, he took a period of last half year, I mean, from December uh, 2023 uh, to June 2024. But actually, the, the most, uh, the fattest uh, streaks uh, Hikaru performed in November. So if you would just take one more month, the probabilities would considerably go down. I mean, even even the extremely low anyways, but it would go down much more because uh, he performed like three more streaks, very, very serious streaks uh, in November. And the most unlikely mathematically again, mathematically, yeah, it's not uh, it's not just words or emotions. It's mathematics. The most unlikely streak he performed in November. 
uh, this 45 and half out of 46 i believe against a very strong opposition like two two thousand nine hundred fifty which is more or less my rating uh, on chess.com so let's say uh, yeah he would make against me 45 and half out of 46 why let's try maybe we can play at some point under surveillance and let's see if he will manage this but anyways uh, yeah and that is even I, I, I calculated that performance even on uh, using feeder rating still it was extremely low probability so the feeder rating performance of Hikaru there was like I think 3100 uh, so in this uh, like 40 plus games in a row nobody ever not only performed like that but even got close to it i mean it's like huge gap so it's best ever in history one of the best ever in history because Hikaru, Hikaru has some more uh, but it's him by far and uh, and his performance uh, chess comp performance of those 40 46 i think games in a row was above i think it was 3629 i mean just insane yeah uh okay you can win five ten games in a row but 46 i mean it's a lot to have such performance okay anyways so le let's go it's it is as it is uh, it's from december so let's check let's check from december so then 10 win streaks he has 52 I mean incredibly a lot yeah but in fact because he has much more games so as I mentioned already obviously he has more opportunities to perform such tricks and his opponents are weaker yeah than other players opponents then actually it is very likely 93 percent so 10 win streaks 52 no problem but mathematics suddenly starts to say that 25 wins in a row streaks by the way, Magnus having a bit weaker opposition, but not that much weaker, he performed zero. Yeah, he couldn't perform in more than 400 games a single one. Hikaru performed at uh, this period 17 streaks with 25 wins in a row. The probability is, I'm sorry, 0.1 percent. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Come on, come on. Yeah, and it's again. Uh, I mentioned that if you take uh, November, it would drop significantly it would be less i mean it would be zero zero something percent so it is like high alert 0.1 percent and 25 uh, streaks 17 of 25 streaks it's more than 400 games so it's a lot again that is very important to understand that maybe in 50 games 0.1 percent is still a lot it's still very i mean uh dubious but at least maybe but in 400 games i mean to, to oh dear oh my gosh you guys are right okay this is a number which is really really uh well serious it has to be examined uh, then uh well at least this is according to the formula of the mathematician and mine as well and others i mean it's very logical you know formula and uh, there is no of course you can try something else some different um, ways to analyze it but this is a very very serious formula um, so uh 0.1 percent you see the lowest before with all all four players was nine percent and here zero one percent so yeah uh, and it's not the only one of hikaru I like that longest longest uh, win streak uh, has 54 wins in a row probability is is 35 percent okay that is acceptable acceptable oh yeah that is fine i mean it's below it's less likely i mean to happen uh, uh, than not to happen but still uh, it's kind of okay then 10 games unbeaten streak he has 63 of course you understand 10 10 games unbeaten streak is also 10 10 win streak obviously yeah so 63 76 percent so that is likely but again, when it gets to 25 games streaks, here it's unbeaten streak, then that is becoming much less likely already. Because, uh, yeah, that is why, that, that was my point when I, I, I was checking and started to publish the statistics that, okay, I was actually taking at minimum 20, 20 game streaks. Because I understand 10 games, 12 maybe, that is possible. But when it gets to 20, 25, and he has more than 40 game streaks, that is actually very unlikely even common sense tells that it's very it's very difficult to win 
40 games in a row yeah, against a decent opposition, the international masters, I mean, some grandmasters, well, it's extremely difficult. So here it also says he has 25 streaks like this without losing a single game. Uh, 20, uh, yeah, so, and that is 2.6%. Uh, okay, also very well, low, really low, especially when you have another, yeah? Another, well, but those, those two are at least more or less uh, correlated, yeah? But still, this is a, this simply, according to mathematics, very unlikely to happen that you will have such 25 games in a row streaks. And I would say that uh, the author of this research, he didn't, he didn't uh, publish, uh, I mean, he didn't check, let's say, 40 game streaks. Hikaru has more than one. And I'm something tells me probability would be even lower, but okay, that is another story. Uh, so let's check exactly the parameters of the research. Then again, 10 games, nine and a half out of 10 uh, performance. He has 63 uh, streaks like this, but yeah, again, because of those two numbers, uh, that is very likely 98%. Again, the same story when it gets to 25 games in a row. Uh, over performance streak, so it means how many times he managed 24 and a half out of 25, 21 streak like this, 1.7 percent. Again, extremely low. Check. Of course, I understand the, the making, uh, the having less games, but look at zero zero. Nobody manages it. I mean, no other top players manages. Here, 25 win streaks zero. I'm sorry, Magnus is a strong player. So let's say if he couldn't manage in more than 400 games, a single one and Hikaru, let's say in, uh, well, uh, six times, less than six times between five, five and a half times, yeah, more or less more games. So he should have maybe five or six then, yeah, but he has 17 here the same. Yeah. So this is also even just common sense tells, okay. It's kind of strange, yeah? I mean, they cannot, nobody can manage, Carlson cannot manage. Hikaru makes 21 streaks like this. This is too much. This is really just this too nice much. Enough. Okay. And then the longest overperformance streak, uh, 54, so 53 and a half out of 54, 62%. That is likely. Longest unbeaten streak, 80 in a row. I mean, seems to be a lot, but again, because there are a lot of games and, uh, uh, well, the weaker opponents than others, so that is still likely, 70%. But again, okay, this is very serious. So his, normally, his statistics should be more getting to the center to 50% in such a, a long amount of games. And and I want to repeat, so now let's, let's see, 0.1%, I haven't seen anyone with this uh, probability, this, this, you see, 9 was uh, the lowest from all these four players, you know, and so on. So now I want, I want to first to answer uh, in advance, prophylactically, to, to, because I already see, you know, uh, how the fan group of Hikaru and some bots, they start writing, but this is Hikaru, he is great. Everything is included in this number. So if, so let's say if it would be here, would be Hans Niemann or Jose Martinez, the number would be 0.001%. So that is 0.1% for Hikaru, for all his uh, great, let's say, chess qualities. So this doesn't work. Okay, the, this is cherry picking. No, this is not cherry picking. It's done by professional mathematician of very high level, not cherry picking. I understand there will be many. Okay, the, I, I guess after they try two or three explanation, which are simply obviously wrong, then they would start to insult me. I'm pretty sure I will get a lot of insults. I'm fine with it. That only shows that if this is the argument, uh, the last argument you have, it means you have no arguments anymore. So, okay, now, uh, well, the conclusion. The conclusion is very simple. First of all, everything from the very beginning, what I was saying, it was mathematically based. Uh, it was correct. I mean, of course, there can be different systems. So I invite mathematicians to discuss, but not like, uh, not people who has no clue about mathematics and statistics. 
So uh, it was completely correct. So all this campaign from the very beginning against me started from Hikaru, who started it, his, his fans, bots, uh, his sect, uh, Chesscom. I mean, this is extremely dirty, disgraceful campaign because it's not based on truth. The truth is that it's by a very serious mathematical uh, expertise tells that it's what I was saying from the beginning is correct. That is first. So, uh, I mean, that is already showing a lot, uh, I think, of the who, who is uh, manipulating, who is telling the truth and why that is for, for everybody uh, of you to, to think about why it is happening that is first but second it's not that is not the most important the most important now i want a very clear answer from hikaru and chesscom especially chesscom i think he's just full of shit. sorry i said it that's just all that needs to be said hikaru is odd i mean uh, okay they have to explain this because this is serious this is not uh, uh, you cannot just dismiss it anymore or, or let's put it other way uh, if chesscom keep silent as they usually do uh, or uh, yeah or, or tell some uh, usual nonsense no this is not okay our our mysterious mathematician has a different uh, has different numbers okay uh, that that is you know you have to prove it mathematically if there is an issue with the way it was uh, done please explain with the mathematicians you know what was what is wrong here we have not done a very good job of, of communicating it. Further, I would say that when the stakes have gone up, the stakes are no longer $1,000 once a month on a Title Tuesday. It's general feelings of frustration when title players aren't punished. The punishment has not met the crime. We have not properly invested in what is now at stake. Oh, what do you believe? What other system can be used and presented? publicly because this is very serious uh, if you don't do it okay it just everybody can draw their conclusions but to me everything is clear then why the chesscom would again not doing it when there are several groups independent not even aware of each other were doing uh, this and came to a very similar conclusions uh, that the probability of those streaks uh, probability is well extremely low let's put it this way what does it mean it means of course it doesn't mean that for sure hikaru there was something wrong with hikaru not 100 percent obviously uh, it can be as i mentioned already can be something wrong with his opponents who had the artificially high rating because let's say if the difference would be here 600 points then all those uh, performances would be within a kind of a, a standard or, or deviation of a standard. But so it can mean two things, whether his opponents have completely artificial rating, which probably means, and, but, but since he had so many opponents playing uh, those, performing those trick, it means that everything is totally rotten in chesscom, so there is a lot of cheating. How come so many players can have uh, uh, such, a, you know, such a artificial rating? Or, or, I mean, there is a serious questions to Hikaru. I mean, or otherwise, well, they need to explain with a professional mathematician to explain uh, the, um, I mean, what, what do they, how would they uh, contest this? But they cannot keep silent anymore. I mean, because, well, I think people for everyone is very clear that this is something you cannot ignore, simply cannot ignore. And therefore, uh, well, the ball is on their side. Uh, and, uh, well, I mean, because it's not, uh, well, you cannot anymore pretend that this is not our business, Chesscom. It's your business. But more than that, much more than that, it's our business. Because it's a business of chess. It is actually the major test for integrity of online chess at all in general. Uh, and uh, I mean, we cannot just uh, swallow it. I mean, we cannot just let it without any explanation, without any mathematics, because that would mean that's why I'm so tough on it. I'm pushing and pushing. No, I mean, that means we agree in a way to that 
you can do anything. If you are Chesscom friendly or whatever, I don't know. If you're a top player, you can do absolutely anything, any statistics. You can win 50 games in a row against uh, Magnus Carlsen and nothing will happen. No, no, sorry. Everybody is, uh, well, is has to explain. Everybody has to be checked. Kikaru, me, Magnus, doesn't matter. If the statistics is so so much i mean if it's uh is so much uh, well um let's say unusual <laughs> so i i believe that whoever performs uh, like that uh, this probability has to be seriously examined uh well probably cameras should be all over the place where hikaru is playing uh, I'm absolutely convinced there must be a test, like, you know, he has to play probably under surveillance in a public place with uh, some players of this caliber and has to, to try to perform like that or something quite similar. I'm, for example, 29, 70 or something on Chesscom. I can test uh, Hikaru if he wants to uh, play 46 games with him and see if he manages 45 and half out of 46 because his average was 29.50 there mm, or maybe even 43 and half out of 46 would already be quite okay so and you can take any player it shouldn't be me it can be any other player but okay it simply cannot we cannot proceed like this because it means we simply give up honest play we just give up uh, and we we say okay chesscom can do anything they want no they have to have a control because it's about chess also it's not only about uh, the it's not just their business it is our business uh, fair play is our business so chesscom hikaru please answer it's not an accusation but i obviously you can see now have very serious questions concerns which must be answered and then we proceed okay that was enough uh, for for today uh, children so now time to sleep uh, and uh, have peaceful dreams